Hey, so today I'm going to go over how I generated over 500 leads for this auto detailing client in under a year. And this isn't going to be a full on step by step tutorial. I already have one of those on the channel. I'll link that in the description below. But in this video, I wanted to cover things at a high level on how you construct these campaigns, the pieces you have to have in place in order to actually get results with Google ads. If you're new here, my name is Chris Down. I create content on a lot of different niches when it comes to Google ads. And today we're gonna to be talking about this particular campaign. So if you wanna see more content like this, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, it really helps out a lot. And if you are the owner of an auto detailing business, there's a link in the description below for a free consultation. Um, I can check it out, see if I can help you out, but let's jump into the content. So to kick things off, I just wanted to go over a couple slides um, just to kind of illustrate things a bit more visually. Really getting success on Google ads comes down to a few key buckets that you need to focus on. And those are you need to get good traffic from Google. So you want to have people searching for auto detailing near me, car detailing near me, um, mobile auto detailing, auto detailing in you know whatever your location is. You need to get that kind of traffic from Google. And that comes down to keywords, negative keywords, all that kind of stuff. We'll cover that in just a second. Next thing we need to have happen is we need our ads to get clicked at a high enough rate. And then once those people click on our ads, we need to send them to a landing page that actually converts them into a lead. And on top of that, there really is kind of like a fourth thing sort of underlying this whole process, and that is relevance. And what relevance is, is you need to have, like let's say somebody types in mobile auto detailing Dallas, Texas. They search that, and then you show them an ad that says, hey, we do mobile auto detailing in Dallas, Texas. And then you send them to a landing page saying, hey, we're an auto detailer in Dallas, Texas. That relevance needs to happen at every step of the process and every single ad group on your campaign. And if there's a mismatch in terms of that relevance, like let's say you, you have somebody that's searching for ceramic coating and you show them an ad for paint protection film, there's going to be a mismatch. Like that's not going to be relevant. It needs to be very, very specifically relevant to what somebody searched. And the more relevant you can make that process, the better. So the first thing we'll talk about here, we'll talk about the traffic. We'll go over keywords really quick, match types, negative keywords, all that kind of stuff. So the first thing we want to talk about is getting the right traffic coming to the campaign. Now, there's a few ways we get the right traffic, and that is through selecting the right keywords, using match types on our keywords, and then also using negative keywords. Now, the first thing you're going to notice here is all these different ad groups. So these ad groups are really just uh, keyword themes. So within each one of these ad groups, you want to take your keywords and then group them into themes like this and then structure your campaign kind of like this. It obviously doesn't have to be specifically like this. Um, but for example, in the paint correction ad group, every single keyword in there deals with paint correction. Every keyword in the Dallas ad group right here is all about people searching for auto detailing Dallas. Same thing with car detailing, auto detailing, mobile auto detailing. You just want to take your keywords, bundle them into uh, themes like that, and then organize them that way. So if we jump into the car detailing ad group, the first thing we want to talk about when it comes to getting the right traffic mm -hmm. is choosing the right keywords to bid on. Now, there, there's not one best keyword. Every market's going to be different. But the main thing you want to focus on is choosing keywords that are further down the buyer's funnel and they're higher intent. You want to have people that are searching specifically for uh, detailing services in their area. So um, this one's a little bit broad car detailing phrase match here, but you want to have things in there like car detailing near me, car detail near me, car detailers near me. Um, and you can see the list here. A lot of what you're going to see in any of these campaigns is 80% of the traffic is going to go to 20% of the keywords. So you can see a lot of it is just focused on these two keywords and then it's kind of spread out across the other ones. But the main thing here with keyword selection, again, you want to make sure you're bidding on high quality, high intent searches. And then on top of that, we want to use what are called match types. So you can see these little quote things around here, these little, um, I guess, quote marks. This is what's called a phrase match keyword. It used to be quite literally, it would have to have this phrase in the search term for the ad to show. But nowadays, it's just kind of a bit more of a suggestion <laughs> for Google. So really, I look at these as different levels of how wide you're, let, you're willing to let Google go in terms of what they want to show your ad for. So phrase match is a little bit more broad, but these brackets right here, this is called exact match. And again, this used to mean quite literally, it will only show your ad for that exact search term. But now exact match is, it'll show for that, but it will show for things kind of similar to it as well. So the whole idea with match types, the phrase match and exact match, is it kind of constrains Google. 
One thing you typically don't want to do is bid on broad match keywords, which is, you know, if it says car detailing near me and there's no brackets or quotes on it, it's just the keyword. It'll be broad match. That kind of lets Google go wild <laughs> in a way with what they're showing your ad for. It can work if you have a lot of negative keywords, but the challenge with that is you want to make sure Google is constrained in what they're showing your ad for to a certain extent. You don't want to totally restrict them, but you want to make sure that your ads are showing up for relevant search terms and the uh, phrase match and exact match keywords are usually the best ways to do that. Now, on top of that, you want to have negative keywords. Now, negative keywords are the opposite of keywords. This is just telling Google what you don't want to show up for. So if you were to bid on broad match keywords, you're probably going to have your ads showing up for a lot of different stuff. Um, it could be uh, detailing products, detailing kits, um, you know, the names of different brands in detailing, whether it's a product or a store or something like that um, could be showing up for your competitors. So you want to also build that negative keyword list. And some of the best ways to do this are go to Google and just look up common negative keyword lists. And you're going to find a ton of different articles with them. Go through your local market, find competitor brand names, add those in there. Uh, in the detailing space, you want to add in different national brands. So whether it's a store or a product or anything like that, and then you just go through the keyword planner and find negative keywords in there. And you layer these three things together to make sure you're getting the right traffic coming into your campaign. Now, the next thing we got to talk about is getting your ads actually clicked on. Um, now, really the biggest thing with this is again, going back to relevance. If you show a relevant ad to what somebody searched for, your click through rate is going to be higher. And if that relevance is there through the process, it's also going to help your conversion rate as well. So if we jump back to the campaign, going back to the whole idea of ad groups here, the first thing you want to keep in mind again, is that relevance. If you are bidding on the keyword auto detailing, Dallas, Texas, you want your ad to say, we do auto detailing in Dallas, Texas. If you're doing paint correction, you want your ad to talk about paint correction. So that is kind of the first fundamental thing that you need to have in place to not only get your click through rate higher on your ads, but also boost up your conversion rate once they get to the landing page. So since this is a live client account, I can't specifically show you these ads, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into just an ad editor window and then go over a few things that you should keep in mind. So when you're creating a new ad for your Google ads account, whichever ad group you're creating it for, you're going to hit that blue plus sign. You're going to select uh, create responsive search ad, and then you're going to see a page that looks something like this. Now, this final URL, you want to send this traffic in nine out of 10 cases to a landing page that's going to convert the highest. This display path, I always use whatever keyword is relevant to the ad group you're creating the ad for. So this is a car detailing ad. You can create it for auto detailing. Uh, if it's mobile auto detailing, I put mobile auto detailing in here. Uh, if it's a geographic ad group, I put in whatever the geographic keyword in into this uh, display path. This doesn't actually influence where the ad is going. This is just sort of like an aesthetic thing that's on the ad itself. Now, when it comes to creating the headlines for the ad, I just sort of brainstormed a few right now. What you're going to want to do is you want to um, by default, you're going to see, I think, maybe like eight or something like that. And then you'll see like a little blue plus sign that'll say more. Just hit that little blue plus sign. It'll expand out to 15 different headlines. And the whole idea with responsive search ads is you want to fill in every single one of these headlines. So go through all 15 headlines, create unique headlines for each one. And then the same thing with the descriptions, you have four different descriptions, create different descriptions for each one uh, of these as well. The reason why you want to do this is Google's actually going to rotate these headlines around, rotate the descriptions around, and they're going to find what works best for that particular ad group. So uh, rule of thumb that I use is about a third of the headlines, I will have them uh, incorporating the keyword for that specific ad group. So if it's mobile auto detailing, the headlines will be, you know, mobile auto detailing service, uh, mobile auto detailing near you, mobile auto detailing, maybe in the location that you're servicing. Um, the other third, I usually have calls to action. So it could be, you know, we come to you call today, uh, call today for a free quote. And then the other third of the 15 headlines, I usually have as some kind of like a benefit or a differentiator. Um, and this is obviously going to vary and be unique to your own business. So um, saying, you know, use eco-friendly, uh, eco-friendly products. Uh, you have five-star customer reviews. There's a ton of different things you can do with this. And I think one of the key things, and one of the reasons why I don't really show off ads outside of not wanting to give my clients ads away is Every market is different. Every situation is different. Every business is different. So 
creating something that's more unique to you is better than just copying something else entirely. So that's the headlines, the descriptions. Similar to the headlines, you just have more characters. So this can be some about information, types of cars you service or types of vehicles you detail. Um, it could be the services you provide. It could be maybe about the products you use, maybe about your process, whatever it might be. You can put that in the description and rule of thumb, I usually try to incorporate some keywords, some differentiators and calls to action in the descriptions as well. And then on top of that, creating uh, assets as well is really, really key for improving your ads um, on top of the headlines and descriptions. And to do that, you don't, usually don't wanna do it here, but you can do it uh, up at the campaign level. You can add in assets to your campaign. And these are things like site links, call outs, uh, phone call extension. And all these things help your ads stand out a little bit more on the search engines and help you essentially get a little bit better results from them. So that's the ads. Again, biggest thing to get the best performance out of your ads, make sure everything is relevant to that specific ad group and to those keywords you're bidding on. Now, the last thing we wanna talk about is the landing pages and I will hop over to my landing page builder to talk a little bit about that in the next section. Okay, so we're back to the uh, lovely slideshow here for the final, uh, final section. The last thing you need to have in place is landing pages and you need to make sure they are converting that traffic into leads. Now, um, I would really say that landing pages are really the most important part of this process. The pages that you send traffic to will really make or break a campaign because getting the right traffic is honestly probably the easiest part of this whole process. As long as you have the right keywords, match types and negatives, you're gonna get quality traffic. Getting your ads clicked on, again, is pretty simple to do. You just need to make sure that you are uh, putting the right ads in front of the right people. So make sure all that's relevant. But if you send them to a page that isn't designed properly is, you know, are you sending them to like the homepage of your website or you're sending them to a page that loads way too slow, they're just not going to convert into leads. You might get some people calling your call extension, but the biggest thing is that your landing pages convert those people into leads. And again, I'm going to beat this point to death relevance. If all of this is not relevant, like you can have, let's say somebody searching for ceramic coating, you show them an ad for ceramic coating, and then you send them to a landing page that only talks about like window tinting or something like that. Because if somebody's looking for ceramic coating, they click on an ad for ceramic coating, they're expecting to see a page about ceramic coating. So all that needs to line up. If none of that's lining up, then you're going to have a problem. But most important part of this process is landing pages. And I'm gonna hop back over to the campaign really quick and go over why that is. So the reason why landing pages are so important is because of this number right over here, the conversion rate. Now, if you are not aware what a conversion rate is, uh, the conversion rate is essentially the number of clicks on your ads that actually turn into a lead. So this is somebody that uh, calls the phone number on the landing page, calls a phone number on the ad, or that uh, fills out a form and becomes a lead that way. So the higher we can get this conversion rate, the better, because that means it's gonna take fewer clicks to get a lead. So typically a website, um, if it's you know designed well and optimized well, can usually convert like five to 10%. Uh, it really depends. There's a lot of variables in that, but usually with a landing page, you can get conversion rates of 20, 30, uh, in some cases 40%. And the higher that number is, the lower that cost per lead is gonna be. And at the end of the day, we want this number, this cost per conversion number to be as low as possible without, you know, sacrificing lead quality, all that kind of stuff. So putting a landing page in place or just having a page maybe on your website, whatever it might be, that actually converts that traffic at a high enough rate is super, super important to making this whole process work. So I'm going to jump over to my uh, landing page builder and I'm going to show you a couple of templates so you can see what landing pages look like and what you want to have on your page. All right, so this is Instapage. This is the landing page builder that I use for my campaigns, my clients' campaigns. And uh, these are all just templates right now. So these are not actually designs that I'm running for a client, but uh, I'm just going to use this one right here just because it's a pretty you know landing page 101 kind of a template. I'm just gonna hit preview and open this up. So with landing pages, obviously you can design this however you want. These are just you know very, very basic blocks. Um, the biggest thing is you want it to be very, very simple, very focused, and you want to really just drive people to whatever that next step is, whatever that call to action is, because if you have too many distractions on the page, which is usually what happens with a website, uh, your conversion rate tends to drop. So things you're gonna notice here, 
there's no navigation. It's really just focused on putting the call to action in front of somebody. So usually on a landing page, I'll have the phone number here up in the top right. Um, the headline, you want it to be relevant again to whatever the ad was. It doesn't have to be exact. So if you're sending somebody from a mobile auto detailing ad, you want your landing page to talk about mobile auto detailing. So something that should be roughly what your headline should be. You can do some sub copy uh, stuff right here. Um, and again, this is all flexible. There's not one best landing page. Really the best advice I can have is just build one and test it and see how it works. Um, but again, you want it to be very focused, very simple. Always have reviews on your page. Talk a bit about your services. Show off some of your past work. Uh, before and after pictures work really well. Again, yeah, it's like it's super, super simple. You don't have to overcomplicate it. The whole idea here is that you just want to take somebody from an ad, send them to a very focused, very simple landing page that doesn't have to be overly designed and it just does its job. The whole idea is that if somebody clicks on an ad, you just want to answer whatever problems they might have in their head. So if they're looking for an auto detailer, you pretty much just have to show them, hey, we're an auto detailer. These are our services. This is some about us information. This is what people have to say about us. This is our work. And if you want to quote, call here, submit a form, whatever the process might be for you. And that's landing pages. I'm probably gonna do more in-depth videos on landing pages further down the line, but make sure that when somebody does click on an ad, you're sending them to a landing page ideally. And, um, and yeah, we'll jump back over to the campaign. All right, so that is it. So those are the three main things that I focus on when it comes to not just running an auto detailing campaign, but running any campaign in general. You wanna make sure those three things are lined up. You got relevance through the entire process. And those are the main things that I focus on to get these results for this particular campaign. So if you want to learn more, I do have a full uh, in-depth tutorial for auto detailing. I'll leave that in the description below. Um, if you are the owner of an auto detailing business and you would like to generate leads for yourself, there is a link in the description as well for a free consultation. You can just fill out a form. I can check that out, see if I can help you out. Outside of that, if you did find this content helpful or valuable in any way, Feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And yeah, besides that, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.